بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the heavens and the earth, and we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon our master Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all of those who followed after with excellence up until the day of standing. Ameena, ameena, ameen. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an al-Kareem, he speaks about a great woman who is the mother of a great man, and that is the mother of Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam. And in the Qur'an al-Kareem, her name is not mentioned, but rather she is referred to as Umm Musa, the mother of Musa. And Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam is from amongst those prophets who is mentioned numerous times in the Qur'an al-Kareem. It's probably, he is probably one of the most frequently mentioned prophets in the Qur'an al-Kareem. And every time he is mentioned, there is a new reason, a new purpose uh, why he is mentioned. We have to remember that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats a story in the Qur'an, he will only be repeating it for a different angle, a different understanding, a different meaning that is mentioned uh, in that second uh, part of uh, the story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. So we will be reading through Surah Al-Qasas, the surah of the story, right? Qasas are stories, and some of the Quran has stories in it. The Quran is divided into different themes. You have parts of the Quran which speak about belief, about faith, about Iman, faith in Allah, in His angels, in the prophets, in the books, in the resurrection, in the afterlife, in destiny, the good of it, the bad of it, and so on and so forth. Then we have parts of the Quran that speak about uh, the stories of the previous people, stories of the prophets and messengers, stories of the tyrants and the evil people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us stories. Why? Because the human being in his nature <coughs> likes to hear stories. We love to listen to stories. This is why we are so engaged with our Facebooks and with our WhatsApps and with our social media because we like to hear new stories all the time, right? Previously, you would watch the news once a day or a few times a day. Now, mashallah, tabarakallah, every moment of the day you can hear news. And the good thing about it is you can hear news about every corner of the earth, every people on the globe, whatever you wish. If you get bored of this story, move on to that story. You get bored of these people, move on to those people, and so on and so forth. <coughs> And hence the human being is so occupied with stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, but the stories that I tell you, they are the best of stories. Huh? The stories that I tell you, they are the best of stories for taking heed and taking lesson and understanding and developing your mind and your soul and your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He begins with these letters. Why does Allah begin the surahs with these particular letters? He begins the surahs with these particular letters to highlight to the Arab, to challenge the Arabs, to challenge the Arabs that this is your language and you are boasting that you are the most eloquent of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing you letters of the Arabic language. Not words, not sentences, not paragraphs, not chapters. He is bringing you letters of the Arabic language and he is bringing them together. And when you hear them, you will hear a melody in your ear that you will feel this is the greatest speech ever. But yet, you will not even be able to bring together letters of the Arabic language to make that melody. 
to make that impact in your hearts. When the Arabs, they had verses like Alif Lam Mim Hamim Yasin. When the Arabs heard these verses, they were shocked. They had never heard a style of speech like this ever before. And then what shocked them even more was the fact that they were not able to match this style of language. This is why the ultimate miracle of the Quran is in the style of its speech. That's why Allah said to the Arabs, if you are in doubt of this book, then bring along a chapter. Bring along 10 verses. Bring along a surah. Bring along a verse. And let's see if you can match with the eloquency and the beauty of the Quran al kareem But they could not. Why? Because this is kalamullah. This is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah said, Tilka ayatul kitab al mubin They are the clear verses, signs of the clear book. The word ayah, what is the ayah? It's a sentence of the Quran, isn't it? But the literal meaning of ayah is sign. Every single verse of the Quran is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sign concerning what? Imam al-Ghazali radiallahu anhi said, وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ آيَةٌ تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ وَاحِدُ And in everything, there is a sign that indicates upon the oneness of Allah. And the ayat of the Quran, they are signs of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَتْلُوا عَلَيْكَ مِنْ نَبَأِ مُوسَىٰ وَفِرْعَوْنَ بِالْحَقِّ لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah said, we will recite to you, i.e. to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will recite to you from the story of Musa and Fir'aun with the truth for a people who have faith. The Qur'an penetrates in hearts that have iman. You must believe in it for it to penetrate.